YouTube channel and let me know when we're live because I think we're going to be live. Anyways, I'll assume that we are. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Charles Sterling. Many of you actually have seen me before. Today join, is joining me with Matthew Roche, who actually I've put him on the big camera. So you're actually looking at way. <laughs> yeah, big smile for us. And Thanks for the warning, Chuck. Very, very dapper in your button down shirt, too. I just don't have a camera today. I'm, I'm doing my webinar today from the office, which is a little bit um, out of sorts for me. And um, just got back from Dublin, where I did the, the uh, BI Summit there. And we actually did this presentation with a gentleman by the name of Colin Murphy from our marketing team. And in doing that presentation, it turns out there is a, a lot of confusion around what is this common data service for apps, common data service for analytics, and the common data model, and how do they fit together, and do I care? So I'm glad. Uh, thank you, Audrey Gordon. I don't know if Audrey is on the call or not, but thank you for signing me up to do this topic because it actually is perfect timing. And Matthew is on my team, actually on my sibling team. He actually works on something called the PBI Cat Team where he goes out and helps customers adopt and actually work their way through. So Matthew, do you want to do your introduction when we get to you or do you want to do it now? Let's let's do it now just to get it out of the way. I know okay. myself well enough that I will forget uh, if I wait. Uh, so good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, as Chuck mentioned, my name is Matthew Roach. I'm a member of the Power BI Customer Advisory Team, or CAT Team. Uh, and uh, I've been with Microsoft for around 10 years, was a data warehousing and BI guy. Uh, for 10 or 15 years before that. So uh, very exciting to uh, to share uh, the common data service for analytics uh, with everyone today. Uh, I wish I had capabilities like this uh, available when I was out in the field. Yeah, perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my screen sharing because I think I'm kicking off. And um, I would like it if one of you in the chat window could um, go ahead and act the fact that you can actually see my screen. Um, and then Matthew can let me know if you actually can see that. And I actually saw a couple people. Um, I saw Harrison from Columbia joining us. My wife is from Columbia. So uh, buenos dias, uh, Harrison. So thank you for joining us. I am assuming that you can see my screen and I'm gonna go ahead and go forward unless Matthew says I need to stop at this point. You are good to go, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so March 21st, we announced three different things. Uh, common data service for apps, and I'm actually going to walk through that with a series of demos, very few slides. I'm actually going to see if we can just take a look at the technology, and that usually helps me. That's how I learn, so I'm a, I'm, a, you know, applying my mental model to everybody else. I hope that's okay. And then I'm going to hand the reins over to Matthew, and looking at his slides, he's going to do uh, half and half, um, about half slides and half uh, demo. Actually, it probably works out a little bit demo heavy, but and then he's going to hand it back to me. And I'm actually going to walk through the Power BI Insight apps built on top of the common data service for analytics, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So um, that's what we announced. As I said, I'm going to start off with the common data service for apps. So let's start out with actually something that I don't have a slide on is something called the common data model. This is actually the definition or this is actually what Dynamics is used for quite a while for its repository. And we had teams like the Power BI team and the Power Apps team and the Flow team go out and say, how do we take advantage of that set of data services that you guys have written? And they actually went ahead and put that into a box. And I, I'm speaking metaphorically with a set of services that you can actually go out and use their data store as a transactional repository. And that set of services is, my friends, the common data services for apps. Um, hopefully that makes sense. So again, common data model is the definition by which uh, the analytics and the service team actually adhere to, and they can actually start talking back and forth because they share a common repository. And that repository and implementation of that repo repository is called common data service for apps. Now, my portion of the demo is all about how do you, in addition to Dynamics, get data into it from an app creator? Um, you're going to see Matt is actually going to use something called Power Query Online. I could demo that from Power Apps, but I'm going to reserve those demos for him. I'm actually going to show you from the app creation. So getting right into a demo, let's take a look at this itself. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Power Apps. And if you guys haven't seen it, it's actually a lot of fun. You know, it's it's a fun way of creating applications that are, are almost instantly valuable and, and provide value without a lot, of, a lot of work. And you'll see that... In the home screen itself, there's actually a set of options called data. 
This is the common data service itself. This is how you interact with it um, from Power Apps. And I go ahead and take a look at a set of entities. Um, I've had actually had, been asked a couple times, why did we call these entities instead of tables? Do you know the answer, Matthew? I actually, I looked into it. I actually know the answer. So I, I, I will have to guess. It will be interesting to see if I have this. I don't know why the decision was made, but it seems very obvious to me that uh, a table has a, a lot of very uh, well-established context, you know, from a relational database or similar perspective. Uh, and for uh, the common data service, whether it's for apps or uh, for analytics, uh, the underlying storage is much less important than the fact that this represents a true business entity and the data behind it. Uh, so entity allows us to focus on the business context rather than the technical implementation. You know, I, I would like to agree with you. I'd like to say that's exactly it because there's all of this additional functionality like workflows and uh, option sets that you don't think in the, the COD style definition of tables and attributes and tuples and whatnot that aren't here, right? I, I mean, this is a much a larger superset. It turns out it was from a focus group. <laughs> And the fact that the Dynamics team has actually uh, had already set on entities and we actually want to say consistent. But I like our answer better. I'm going to stick with our answer, I think, going forward. So, Excellent. Yeah, it's a secret between me, you, and YouTube, but we'll let, not let anybody else. So uh, I think of these as tables, but again, entities, because they really are a super set in functionality. And I can go ahead and drill down into one of these. Now, it takes a little while. Um, we're still, actually this one was quite fast. And you'll see that we have those relationships and business rules and views and, and I can see the data. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here at this point. Um, we'll take a look at it. One thing that I do find interesting that you don't normally get with a true data definition is that this is actually pre-populated with not just the, the, the model and the schema itself. Again, I didn't create any of this. All of what you look at is actually out of the box. I already have sample data uh, that kind of leads me into what what the creators are looking to actually have put in here. So again, the problem, and Matthew's gonna talk into this about data lakes, the problem with actually not having any definition at all, everybody's gonna have it a little bit different. By having a definition already in place, more than likely you're gonna coalesce in a good spot. And that's actually kind of the, you know, the premise of this common data model. And again, common data service is an implementation of the common data model. So what did I promise? I actually promised to show you going out and doing some data ingress. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my, my favorite visualization tool in the entire world. Uh, that's of course Power BI. And you'll see that I actually have inside of here a visual that is a Power App. And this actually happens to be a Canvas app. This Canvas app is a traditional way of creating application. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So if we go ahead and say, oh, I need to put it in edit mode and go ahead and edit this, it should take us into the Power App Studio. And then you can see that I could actually go out and drag buttons and radio buttons and drop downs and rating um, controls. And again, traditional app creation without the code. Um, you don't usually write a lot of code in Power Apps. So I could go ahead and insert and choose all of these. Um, you're gonna see in a little bit, we actually have a new paradigm that doesn't even require you to do that. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to take this order. Oh, I should have showed you this. Um, if I go ahead and take a look at one of these filters, I should actually see it interacting. What I want to do is actually want to build a select one and order this in this button that says to do or implement this button. So let's go ahead and go back in here and I'm going to um, add right here a form. So if I go ahead and say forms, edit, drag it down it didn't put it exactly where i wanted and i can go ahead and say what data source do i want well you know from the topic that we're going to use the common data service for applications and this is actually one of the options um, if i go ahead and chose add data source you would see that it's actually one of the ones i could have chosen and under new new connection that common data source is here and you have to trust me oh there it is but in this case i actually already have um my connection already established. So let's use one of those other connections. And here is the common data model actually represented. In addition, it's extensible. I went out and created a brand new entity just to play with. Now, this is probably not the best example of um, one that you would want to create. What do I have? De uh, devices. What is the one I call it? 
Uh, I thought it was called devices. I need to actually figure out um, the one that I want. Standby. Um, device order. There it is. It just it's not in alphabetical order. That's why it, it confused me a little bit. And when I go out and choose device order, I could go ahead and add uh, all of those pieces that I, I want. So I can go ahead and say I want a field for not device order, but maybe um, the requester. So let's go ahead and take a look at requested by, and it's going to go ahead and add that field for me. Um, I want to know price. Because again, if I place an order, I probably want to have the price and maybe uh, the primary name of the thing that I'm ordering. So now what I got to do is I got to take this information and put it in here. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. This one was requested by, this one's pretty easy. So if I go ahead and go here, I say, I want to edit this and the data itself is data field is going to be um, user open parentheses, and I think we should actually just grab my email address, and that should work out okay. Um, for the, oh, actually, it looks like I may have put it in the wrong place. Let's try that one more time. User, and what I did was actually didn't put it into that um, text box itself is what happened. So there we go. Okay, and there we go. So we see that email address. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put this into price, edit it, and in this case, I want to grab this value and put it here. So we're going to go ahead and say, I think that uh, Power BI gave it to me. It's called Gallery 2. Yeah, it was. And I'm going to say the selected one, and I should have dot price. There we go. And I should see the price. Now, in a longer demo, and I actually have done this on other webinars, I show you how to format it and make it look pretty and whatnot. In this one, I just want the data there, just to show you how to get data in. Uh, primary name, once again, we're going to go ahead and unlock the changes or uh, let it be editable. And we're going to do that gallery two once again. And this is the primary name. So we go dot selected and product. I think it's probably close enough. Okay. So this is now me putting it in to these text boxes. Now, what I need to do is go ahead and say, I want it to get shoved into that common data services for applications repository. And that's what this button comes into. So I'm gonna go out and say, I want you to submit, uh, what was that, it was form, oh, form one. Uh, it actually prompts me out there. Um, and I also want it to actually probably give me a new empty one. Um, so I'll say new form and this is the most code that you're going to find yourself doing in Power Apps. Also, when I start the um, the screen, I probably want a brand new one of those. So I'll go ahead and say on select or on start on visible. That's a good place. We'll go ahead and say new form. Give me one of these. And what was it? Form one. So now, I don't know if we timed that. We're 13 minutes into it. So it took me less than 13 minutes because we were chatting for a little while. Um, I've created a Power Apps Canvas-based app to push data into um, a common data service for applications. If I go back to Power BI um, and refresh this, reload it, what we should see is my form showing up here at the bottom. I really should have changed the text button, uh, the text in that button. And if I choose one of these, let's actually choose something out of the moderation. Um, and we choose these glasses. Did we choose the glasses? Yeah, I think. Actually, let's let's get this jersey. And if I hit this button, um, let's actually get the primary name. We'll change that to Matthew. Oh, two T's of Matthew. <laughs> ah, thank. It's the hardest part you of the demo. For helping me. Um, okay, and I go ahead and order two of them. Right, one for math or one called Matthew, and, and they're both $108 requested by this. So that is how I get data in to the common data service for applications um, above and beyond Dynamics. And Matthew's going to show us some other ways of, of getting data ingress called Power Query Online. I'm not going to steal that thunder. But at March 21st, we also introduced or announced a brand new way of creating Power Apps applications that makes it even easier than that. I know, Matthew's thinking, there's no way it could be easier than that. <laughs> and I would buy it for $19 without the steak knives. $108. $108. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to, uh, I want to go back to home. How about if we just go power apps and we'll go back to home this way.
At the bottom of your Power Apps experience, a lot of people don't even know it's there. There is a, a option. It's almost an Easter egg. At the very, very bottom here where my mouse is, hopefully you can see that, it says Canvas-based. A lot of people don't even see it. It's actually hidden in many cases by the status bar. If you hit that down, you can actually see where it says model-based. This is in preview, so you know, take it with a grain of salt that it may be a little sketchy in some places. And under apps, I can go ahead and create a brand new type of app that's different. What is what is this experience? What, this, what does this look like? I'm gonna go ahead and choose create app. And I'm gonna call this one the Matthew app because he's my helper for today. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and say done at this point. So my app is almost done. And it's going out and saying, what do you want to display? What, what are we gonna show in this Matthew app? Um, let's actually call this one Matthew title. Okay. And it wants to know what are you, what are you gonna put, what are you gonna display? I already mentioned that before. I wanna display an entity. Remember, what are our entities? Those are tables. Um, because they have a, a lot of functionality above and beyond the tables, why we call them entity. And it says, which one do you want to display? And now if I look in here, I should see one called device order. Oh, this one is alphabetical um, versus the other one wasn't. Uh, we want to be consistent here at Microsoft um, by being inconsistent across our platforms. Well, I think and the nice thing is for both of the common data service uh, uh, offerings, we, we started with an A for each one. So that was very consistent and useful as yeah, well. Yeah, so, so the acronym. No so, one could ever be confused. Yeah, yeah, so Chuck's working on CDSA now, and Matthew's going to be demoing a different CDSA in a little bit. Yeah. So um, anyways, what I've done is I just went out and said, hey, I want my app to show that entity, and I'm done. Now, at this point, it uh, usually doesn't take this long to publish. It would be a great time to take any questions. Did Harrison or Hans Christensen from Norway or somebody is asking any questions? Uh, so are you asking me that, Chuck? Yeah. Or if you could go oh, into the YouTube. Yeah, right, okay. There has been so much traffic in here. It's been difficult for me to uh, to follow along. Uh, I noticed that Mark Valencourt, who is a colleague of mine from the Power BI Cat team, uh, is handling things. Uh, so I have not seen any questions come in that Mark has not already responded to. So okay. uh, no additional hand waving required that okay, I can perfect. see. So Mark, thank you very much for helping us out. Uh, so at this point, it's gone ahead and actually created those forms for me. I've actually already gone out and hit uh, save and publish, or actually I've hit publish. And now if I find the Matthew app and I actually just go ahead and run it or play it, if you will, I'm done. Oh, OK. I should be done. <laughs> <laughs> Did I mention that this is a preview? Um, I think what happened was is I actually published the, um, the group uh, the, the group banner itself, but I needed to publish the app. So I'm guessing that this should actually now work because I hit publish twice. Let's see if there's any if there's any karma that is due me. And you'll see that this application is now done. Again, it took longer to save and publish it twice, once for the group and actually once for the application, than it did for me, the creation. And all I did was I pointed at the entity. So if we go out and hit, uh, take a look at... Um, these um, orders that I've got, this is all stuff that was actually defined by the entity itself. So you just say in the entity, how do you want P to be viewed or what display do you want to actually have? This is the default. I actually didn't add any work. You'll see that this application also automatically has um, Excel templates and export to Excel and edit and delete and add new. So as fast as Canvas apps is for creating applications that put data into interesting places like com common data service for apps, model-based, I, I, I think, is actually faster. Let's go ahead and go ahead and click on the Matthew thinking for helping me that we just added a second ago. And you'll see that we talked about having these entities having a super set of functionality. One of them is actually defining a workflow inside the data model itself. So I could go ahead and say that, um, uh, when is the request date? We didn't supply that, so but we can actually do it in the workflow itself. And I'm going to go ahead and say that since this Matthew is obviously a great guy, that this is clearly approved. Um, we're going to go ahead and even go ahead and place that order. And the order, of course, the order ID number is one, two, three, because that's, of course, the right order ID. Um, and we can actually go ahead and do interesting things like saying, if there were more than 10 of those, have a different price or a different discount. Again, defined in the entity itself. 
So at this point, I think I'm going to come back to my demo slide and see if I forgot anything. I look at CDS for apps, which we've done. I walk you through how to actually do data ingress from Canvas app, and then taking a look at a model based app. So with that, here's a review of the different types of ad, the applications, Canvas app and model. I'm going to hand it over to Matthew, and he's going to share his screen, and I will let him know when he shared it, and then we're going to change the viewport back to him. Excellent. So thank you very much for that, Chuck. And uh, I think it's interesting. Oh, there we go. So I was going to say, you're showing the same slide that I am, so it may be hard to tell when we switch, but uh, <laughs> I'll bet we can make this work. I think we can. Uh, so for a, for a transition, uh, the thing that I would like to stress is that uh, everything that Chuck has displayed so far uh, today, you can do today. So this is all uh, uh, shipping capabilities. So it's in Power BI or in Power BI apps today. So uh, the things that he has shown, take it and run with it. Uh, I'm actually uh, going to be talking about capabilities that are announced and in private preview today, uh, but are not yet generally available. So just uh, I'll throw that out there as a disclaimer. Uh, and uh, before I uh, start diving into my CDS for analytics demo, I'd like to, to, to uh, talk about some of the ways in which the BI platform and Power BI are evolving in general. So very often, uh, when you think about Power BI, you're typically thinking about uh, self-service business intelligence, where the, the three main blocks or the three main capabilities here are our uh, rich set of connectors. So you can connect to pretty much any type of data that you want to. There's lots of different ways that you can connect, including gateways that allow the secure, high-performance communication between Power BI capabilities in the cloud uh, and data that may still be on-premises. Uh, we've got capabilities for BI models, whether they are self-service generated uh, or running in uh, 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 Azure Analysis Services uh, as part of Power BI Premium. Uh, and we have capabilities for data exploration, both uh, in dashboards and reports, as well as in uh, Power BI Desktop for that full uh, uh, analyst experience. But this isn't all that Power BI is. Uh, we're also uh, investing in more traditional enterprise reporting. You're probably familiar with the capabilities that are in Power BI Report Server. Uh, so uh, the pixel perfect scheduled distributed reports uh, that you may have been uh, familiar with from SQL Server reporting services back in the day. More and more of these capabilities are coming into Power BI as well. Uh, we're also continuing to expand our investment in AI and more machine intelligence into more parts of the product. Uh, so you're probably familiar with uh, our natural language query, both through Cortana integration, as well as the Q&A capabilities, which are now available in Power BI Desktop, as well as the Power BI service in the cloud. Uh, quick insights and other capabilities to give you more understanding of your data without needing to go and build that understanding manually. This is uh, yet another uh, area of continued investment. Uh, I'm not going to drill down on the uh, the CDS for analytics right now because this is what I'm about to circle back to. Uh, so we'll put that one on hold for just one more slide. Uh, and I will talk as well, or will mention as well, uh, the investments that we're making in more uh, oversight and governance and enterprise information management. So uh, more capabilities for a Power BI administrator administrator to understand what's been published to the service, who's using it, how do things relate to each other, uh, and so on. Uh, without spending too much time on slides, I actually want to uh, to demonstrate one thing here. So uh, Chuck mentioned uh, uh, during his intro that uh, there were capabilities that we had announced uh, back in March. The context that we announced those capabilities was at our uh, spring 2018 uh, uh, release event. So this is an online uh, uh, an online event that had uh, a whole bunch of videos. Which uh, you know, if you if you look here, it's on the dynamics.microsoft.com site. So uh, Chuck may put the uh, the URL into chat. He may not. You never can tell. Uh, but we had a, a bunch. Of <laughs> A bunch of highly polished marketing videos, uh, which are uh, great oversights to uh, uh, the capabilities that we're discussing today. Without going into those, even though you may want to watch them, the thing that I want to mention is this, uh, the Spring 18 Release Notes PDF. And even though this is on the Dynamics website, this is 
the best place to go to understand what capabilities are coming to Power BI uh, in the near future. So here, here, let me actually scroll up here. I apologize for all of these scrolling uh, during screen sharing. I know this can be disorienting, but we have uh, uh, information about what has uh, been uh, announced and released for the business intelligence platform, including Power BI. So there's an overview. There's a breakdown of you know what what have we just released. So if you're not familiar with that, I actually want to scroll down uh, to look at what's coming, uh, particularly in the July to September timeframe, this is where we uh, uh, talk the more or talk more uh, in the official documentation about that common data service for analytics and some of the other capabilities uh, that were represented by the boxes on those slides that we just looked at. So uh, keep in mind, Power BI uh, is continuing to grow and expand uh, to cover more and more BI and analytics scenarios. Uh, this uh, this release notes document is the best single location to go for more information about what's coming and when it is planned. So uh, there we go. So we're going to segue away from that. Uh, we'll go back into the slides for just a second. And I want to, to sort of queue up uh, the problem space that the Common Data Service for Analytics is, is addressing. Uh, and uh, this is the problem space of data lakes, or more specifically, data swamps. Uh, uh, and the reason that I, I called out data swamps is that the uh, majority, or at least a significant volume of customers, uh, of organizations that are adopting data lakes run into problems uh, uh, because of the flexibility and power of data lakes and big data, it's very, very common for an organization to have uh, an enterprise data warehouse or, or other data warehouse platform or data marts. Uh, and these are ideal for answering questions that the organization already knows to ask. The promise of a data lake and its schema on query, you know, it's basically a directory full of files and the files have a format and there's data in them. Uh, the promise of this is to have the data available in a central location so that uh, you can answer questions in the future that you have not yet thought to ask today. But the challenge for this is that by the time that you actually start going to work with it, typically uh, the scope and sprawl of that data introduces significant challenges to discovering and understanding the data that is in that lake. It becomes the swamp before you can even begin to swim in it. And in this context, the common data service for analytics is introducing a schematized data pool. So, uh, so think you, something that you can swim in similar to a lake, uh, but it has a lot of uh, additional capabilities uh, enabled by metadata and specifically enabled by the common data model, which Chuck introduced in the context of Dynamics uh, and the common data service for apps and, and power apps and all of the other uh, parts of, of, of the ecosystem. But essentially what we do uh, with the common data service for analytics is we have that same uh, powerful, scalable big data store behind the scenes, but we are uh, enabling it with uh, a concept that we call data pools, which is a metadata description of what data exists in what part of the pool. Uh, and uh, through this, we can have applications that are aware of and able to work with these common entity definitions. Uh, uh, the common data service for applications is in many ways uh, that transactional store. So you saw Chuck very, very quickly uh, build an app that works with the data that is in these entities in that transactional store and it's enabled and optimized and made super super easy because of the metadata that's in there because of the metadata that's in that common data model with the cds for analytics we're essentially saying we have this deep insight we have this this semantic understanding because of what we know about these common data model entities uh, and that metadata carries over and makes it easier for data ingress data analytics and reporting uh, i i won't uh, I won't foreshadow too much, but one of the things that Chuck is going to demonstrate uh, is uh, our insights applications. And these insights applications basically work with, uh, uh, they basically work with these common data model entities uh, 
uh, enabling. And I, I have to comment here, my boss is outside the uh, uh, outside my office uh, taking a picture of me right now because <laughs> he hasn't I'm, seen you in a button down shirt in a while. <laughs> I, I, I'm wearing the button up the button down shirt, but I'm also wearing shorts because I hadn't realized there was going to be cameras today. So. <laughs> Apparently he finds he it. Has, uh, he has a site. I have, I have to admit, I saw him wearing the shorts. <laughs> this is life at Microsoft. <laughs> so, so here we, uh, uh, so here, here we have uh, a uh, uh, the common data model, which essentially represents a data centric interface, and this allows Microsoft and other parties to build. Uh, uh, Prepackaged data ingress flows. So, uh, if you're using Dynamics 365 as an example uh, for sales, for marketing, for talent, for for these these different capabilities that Dynamics provides, uh, there are insights applications that will allow you to uh, uh, simply install an app, and that app will handle the ingress of the data uh, from your line of business systems into this data lake and keep that data current. Uh, we've got more capabilities planned for uh, a variety variety of additional third party sources uh, for data coming in. So if you're using these software as a service uh, uh, data sources or applications as a source, uh, the amount of integration that's required to get that into uh, the data pools is uh, uh, trivial. Uh, and we can then build more and more capabilities on top of that, uh, including uh, application integration, ILM, uh, uh, more and more BI and analytics. And as the full ecosystem pans out, so you know this we're still in preview. So a lot of these capabilities are still a while down the road, uh, but we can have uh, out of the box reports, out of the box ML and analytics models, things like fuzzy matching that is informed by the body of knowledge that uh, that Microsoft has, uh, so that we can find uh, related data. Uh, in other domains to match with the data that is in these common uh, data model entities. Uh, we can enrich that data uh, and we can make it easy for people to work with the data and the output of those analytics. And it's all empowered by and enabled by this common data model and its semantic capabilities. So with no, uh, no further ado or no further slides, let's jump into uh, Power BI. I want to uh, mention uh, one thing real quick here, and that is that I am working in our dev test environments. This is our DXT environment. Uh, uh, so uh, the capabilities that we're showing here uh, may be a little weird. Uh, they may be uh, uh, slower than usual, but uh, it allows me to show off the, the latest and greatest preview capabilities. And I'm looking here uh, at our CDS for Analytics Playground app workspace in Power BI. Uh, and in addition to our familiar dashboards, reports, workbooks, and data sets tabs, we have this new data pools tab. And when I come up to create, uh, I also have the option to create a new data pool, which is what I'm going to select. So a data pool is also a collection of entities, but unlike in Power Apps where the, the focus of the entities is on this transactional operation, so create, insert, update, and delete, uh, here our emphasis is going to be on analytics. And uh, I will uh, have the ability to add as many entities as I want to my pool uh, this is our Power Query online experience. So I can choose any of the available uh, uh, connectors. Uh, you'll notice that today there are fewer connectors here uh, than there are uh, in Power Query desktop. Uh, and this is uh, uh, th this is a list that is going to grow and expand. We're targeting full parity with the desktop as we move forward. But again, we are still in preview today. Uh, I'm going to choose this common data service for apps as one of my data sources. And I'll come up here and grab the URL for my environment. I'll put that guy in there. Uh, notice that it's letting me know that I'm already signed in. So it already has my organizational account or Azure Active Directory account. So I will choose next. And uh, it is going to give me the ability to connect to any of the entities that I have access to in this CDS for apps environment. Uh, and this is going to include uh, both the apps, or sorry, the entities that are defined using this common data model. So we'll expand this guy out. 
I will choose account. And just like you would expect for uh, the, the full Power Query experience, uh, it will go out, it will connect, it will pull in uh, preview records, and it will give me the ability both to preview and to manipulate the shape of this. Uh, so here's here's uh, our little spinny is uh, uh, why I threw out that uh, that demo environment or, or uh, 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 preview environment uh, context here. So everything always seems to run more slowly when you're uh, uh, when you're doing a demo. So I'm going to skip over uh, building up that preview. We'll move directly into our uh, Power Query online experience and let it spin here. Notice that in addition to our source on the left our preview in the middle where we have uh, the same capabilities that we would have in Power Query, or sorry, Power BI Desktop's Power Query experience. Uh, we can uh, uh, manipulate, we can uh, navigate over here. What I actually wanna do is just uh, move on and choose next because this last stage is really where uh, the connectivity or data ingress uh, matches up with uh, the common data service for analytics as our destination if you ever if you have ever worked with an ETL tool like SQL server integration services or you know any of the other similar tools that are out there typically the last step of your data flow is to say for for the data pipeline that I have defined so far, each of the columns that are in, in my last component or my last step, let's map them to these columns in the uh, uh, the table or other entity that I'm loading the data into. Uh, and that is exactly what we're going to do here. So it's just a, uh, again, so taking a little bit longer than we're expecting. So uh, Chuck, uh, if you have any yeah, questions. Yeah, there's lots, lots of questions. So uh, the so first give, give me an easy one, because this will be over soon. Um, so. Uh, why did we not call it a data lake? Why? What's what's the difference in this data pool? Much like a field versus an entity. Why data pool, not data lake? What's so, so, so that that's a, a very interesting question, and honestly, I don't know. Un, un, unlike Chuck, I wasn't there for the conversation, so <laughs> I'm not sure exactly why we chose said name. But uh, the 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 data pools in CDS for analytics uh, uh, address a lot of the same capabilities as a data lake, but because they have this metadata layer, because they have these capabilities, these guardrails for uh, ensuring that we understand what the data is and where it's coming from. Uh, it's not just a lake, uh, and uh, if I think about you know going swimming, I can go swimming in a lake, I can go swimming in a pool. Uh, one of them is going to have a higher quality experience by default. You know, there's some very nice lakes out there, uh, but uh, jumping into a random lake versus a random pool, one is going to have a higher uh, 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 higher opportunity for. I like, I like the gu the guardrails. It's actually going to lead you into the right place. Um, there, so, 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 so we mentioned that this is preview, I think. Yeah, we did mention that. I'm actually going to, I'm just going to cancel out here. We're going to come back in. Uh, you guys have seen uh, the error that popped up. So it gave me information that normally I would use uh, either to investigate or to share with, uh, 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 share with the CDS for analytics team. Uh, instead, uh, I'm simply going to come in and restart this. This is a, a new error for me. So I've, I've, uh, as, as you can, probably guess I've gone through this demo a handful of times uh, as we have been preparing for this webinar. So I've walked through this three or four times this morning and it's always gone smoothly until the uh, in, until there are actually people watching. So that's the uh, the nature of demos in my experience. And while we're waiting for this particular uh, uh, dialogue to draw down that common data model entity set, um, John White asks, so how does this actually map to my app workspaces? Uh, do, go ahead. If Yep, so, uh, so uh, a data pool is part of your app workspace, uh, but uh, the data that is in that pool can be accessed by resources that are in other workspaces as well. Uh, so, uh, all right, so I am, I am, I am actually gonna fall back uh, and and add a different entity because I, I, I want to go through this end to end uh, and I have the uh, uh, what should I call it I have uh, a data pool that I've created already the pre baked one uh, so uh, we're gonna see the data coming in in this case they've been talking at the same time but in this case uh, from uh, Azure SQL DB uh, and uh, we're gonna land this data since it seems like it's the uh, the connection to CDS for for apps 
uh, that is uh, uh, causing us problems. So the basically the, the use case that I'm working on here is uh, if I have uh, accounts which are tracked in uh, uh, in Power Apps or in, in CDS for Apps, uh, and I want to see the impact of crime uh, on uh, on the activity of those accounts. Uh, there's publicly available data. In this case, this is a public Chicago, City of Chicago crime report uh, data set that's available, which I've loaded uh, into uh, CDS, or sorry, I've loaded into uh, uh, Azure SQL DB. Uh, if I wanted to get this together uh, into uh, the same data pool uh, as uh, the same data pool as my account data, uh, basically having a, a single place where where my analysts or other users could go to work with that data together, uh, uh, having multiple entities in there would be a great way to do it. Um, uh, what I would have done if that flow for accounts had worked as expected is I would have selected uh, account as that common data model standard entity type and just auto-mapped uh, the columns from my query definition into the columns in this entity type. What I will instead do here is I will say, I'm going to load this as a custom entity type, which is going to be a crime report. I choose commit, commit. I now have that metadata stored. I actually want to do one last thing. And the reason for this is because this majority of the time for my work with CDS for analytics uh, is uh, in many cases, uh, I've already built up uh, a big M query, uh, either in uh, Power Query in Power BI Desktop or in uh, Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, which have these great dev experiences and their M extensions or SDKs for it. But I can take this full complex query simply paste the M that worked somewhere else, you know, that I've that I've refined and tested in another environment. Uh, once it's done, I can paste it in here uh, and give it a name. Again, I've got that full interactivity here so I can click on uh, any source to see what the uh, uh, what the data looks like here. And this one I know is going against a very slow web service. So I know better than to uh, uh, to wait for that to load. But we'll give that a name. I'll choose commit. And now that I have the entities for my data pool defined, I can save. I will not call this Chuck uh, because it's all about me today, apparently. Uh, <laughs> and we will give it a name and a description. We save it. And I will choose yes. I will refresh now. When I close this out, uh, A, I can see that the data pool that I've just defined is now refreshing. I'm going to take a look at my little pre-baked webinar here. We've got uh, our pre-baked webinar uh, data pool here. Uh, and I can see uh, that I can edit its definition. I can go into its settings, uh, uh, where these settings include uh, defining schedules so we can run multiple times per day or multiple times per week as we as we choose to. Uh, I can view that refresh history so we can see that for this definition that we've run it once so far today uh, and we haven't scheduled it yet. Uh, and I also have the ability to export the DPLX file. Uh, I'm not going to go down this particular path because I want to be conscious of the time, but this is actually the data pool metadata definition. So uh, if you want to take a look at the underlying JSON uh, definition for the data pool, maybe uh, you know put that under source control or something similar, you have the ability to export that. And if you're looking uh, for more insight into sort of the technical underpinnings, you know what, what capabilities does a data pool have, this is not a bad place to look. So once we've done this, the, the the basic capabilities that we have uh, or the, the, the capabilities that we've accomplished are we've loaded data from multiple sources, including the common data service from apps and uh, a, a transactional database, maybe a web service, maybe Dynamics, maybe who knows. Uh, but we've loaded data from multiple places, having these strongly typed entities in this data pool. And if I then switch over into Power BI Desktop, uh, I can go into that same uh, uh, Git data experience that I would use when connecting to any other source. I'll choose Git data. 
we will scroll down here. So uh, uh, it's reminding me that the, the data pools connector is in beta. So this is a, a preview connector uh, with all of the caveats that come with that, even though I have uh, told it not to remind me about it again. Uh, uh, here, because I've already logged in using my organizational account, uh, I can see uh, all of the app workspaces that have data pools that I have access to. I can expand these out. We'll go into our little pre-baked webinar. Uh, if I click on uh, any of these uh, entities from CDS for Analytics, I can get a preview and so this one being a much uh, uh, narrower table will have more rows in the preview, but I can basically come in, uh, select these things uh, and choose either load or edit. When I choose load, uh, just as it would with another data source, it will uh, make the connection, it will pull down uh, the information since we're, we're in import mode here right now, I'll pull down that information into uh, my local uh, PBIX file and its tabular model. So I can then uh, uh, work with it. I can mash it up with data from other sources as well. So uh, if, if I, as a Power BI analyst, want to work with data that is not in this particular data pool, I've got that same mashup capability. And when I'm done, the reports, the visualizations, and the underlying tabular model that I create, I can publish this back into any of my app workspaces uh, and have uh, uh, have them be you know fully featured, interactive, refreshable, schedule, and so on, pulling the data from uh, the data pools that were in the, uh, uh, the app workspace that I had been given permission to. So uh, no one wants to see me design a report, uh, both because you've designed reports yourself before and because I am awful at it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back in, uh, show one sort of summary slide, uh, and then hand things back over to Chuck, because Chuck is going to show uh, the simplest part of our uh, our uh, insights no cliffs extensibility story uh, and the thing that I'd like to do I mentioned uh, uh, during my my quick intro uh, I did a lot of work with data warehousing and ETL back before I joined Microsoft uh, and uh, two of the tools that I worked with uh, were the uh, uh, two, of the, two of the tools that I worked with were the uh, SQL Server Data Transformation Services. So we introduced that, my goodness, 20 years ago in SQL Server 7, uh, as well as SQL Server Integration Services, which we introduced in 2005. Uh, and my experience was that DTS, the older tool, it was really, really easy to do simple things, and it was impossible to do complex things, or at least to do them well. So there was this huge cliff that you would run into as far as you went, or as soon as you went beyond uh, a trivial scope. Integration services, on the other hand, it was awesome for doing these complex enterprise things, uh, but the effort involved to do something simple was horrific. There was the, the learning curve that you ran into pretty much instantly as soon as you tried to do anything. With CDS for Analytics and Insights, uh, I, I think that we've really found a sweet spot here because if you are using uh, Dynamics as uh, your application or uh, uh, potentially other uh, uh, software as a service uh, business applications, we can simply, without any code, you just install an app and bam, the data is in your lake, and, or sorry, the data is in your data pool, and then bam, uh, the data from the pool and the insights that we have extracted from it using our pre-built uh, ML and AI uh, is available right inside the applications where you're working with data. But even though it's super simple to do the simplest things, uh, it's also super simple to take the next step. This is what uh, uh, what I showed off or, or showed some of uh, during uh, the demo today, where because this data uh, and the data pools where it's stored are part of your Power BI tenant, part of your Power BI context, uh, you work with them like you would work with any tools uh, and your analysts can use that data or the pre-built reports as a starting point and uh, can simply uh, customize and run from there. So you've got the no code, you've got the low code, uh, and then even though the marketing team hates it when I say this, you've got the mo code uh, capabilities <laughs> as well. Uh, 
I don't know if I've ever said that in public before, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, uh, HR's, I, HR's on their way right we'll, now. We'll see if I actually do get to come back for a follow-up webcast. <laughs> uh, the, 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 key, uh, the key story here, which we have not yet mentioned, is that CDS for Analytics is based on Azure. So we're building everything on top of the Azure data platform uh, and uh, your data scientists, your data engineers, your developers uh, can work with the data natively in Azure. So even though we've got this great story uh, and great flow going through uh, in Power BI, if you have uh, uh, data scientists and engineers that are working in R, that are working in Spark, that are working in Databricks, that are working in Azure ML or Azure Data Factory or blah, 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 um, it's just data in Azure and they can work with it uh, without needing to go through any of the uh, uh, any of the Power BI specific experiences, uh, but we'll also have uh, these capabilities integrated using the metadata in the data pools, uh, so that it is uh, as straightforward and as uh, as as uh, easy as possible, uh, even for those highly technical people doing these highly complex things. So whether it's no code, low code, or mo code, we'll have a great story uh, to let you get the value from the data that you use. And uh, with that said, I'm going to pass this back over to Chuck. Uh, it's all yours. OK, Matthew, you know, there's a bunch of questions in the chat window. If you could help Mark out with those, I think he would actually appreciate the, the hint. Yep. Um, I think I've done a bunch of those, but I see you guys are piling them up. So I just want to reiterate what Matthew was just saying is that, okay. you know, he walked through a scenario where you as a data analyst or a BI professional could go out bring in the data sources that you know about, go ahead and set up those relationships that you know about. And then the next step is in Power BI Desktop, go out and create those measures to give you that magic, as Avi Singh calls it, where you can go out and get the insights. You know, you go out and take a look at the exceptions where I wanna see all those exceptions that actually are past my SLAs or something along those lines. Um, and you start doing your job. Turns out 80% of the world don't want to be a data analyst. They just want the data to tell them what they need to do to do their job. And that's really, again, like what uh, Matthew was just talking about, what the Insight apps are is take all of this functionality, have some of our BI analysts, and their names are Serena Stevens and Kat and Muhammad Ali. Yes, that's really is his name. And they went through and they went out and said, hey, if we know that people are using Salesforce or Dynamics, why don't we do the mapping? Why don't we go out and do those relationships? Why don't we create the measures? And we will create those reports for you. Let me show you what that looks like. Um, I think you're looking at my screen right now. What we're gonna do is actually gonna go into, um, again, this is not available yet. Uh, all my original demos are actually something I want you to go out and play with. This is something that's gonna be coming soon. Um, and an experience where you'd go to the Microsoft website or the Salesforce website, and it would go out and say, start playing with your Insight apps now. And it would actually land you on a page that looks not something like this, but exactly like this. This is actually what we'll be releasing for the Sales Insight. And it's gonna go out and say, hey, we're gonna give you some insights about this. And guess what? Like what everybody wants from Microsoft, they want a next, next finish metaphor. So you're gonna hit next because you want this. You yeah, you, you might want to play with what Matthew's showing, but the end result is you want something like this where I can go out and make my decisions. And it's going to ask you all the questions that our BI analysts have kind of thought about. It's like, hey, if you want to look at your sales data, you probably want to gate where you start. And I'll just say that, hey, um, we start our fiscal year in July um, that here at Microsoft. And then it's going to go out and say, okay, if you look at your sales data, Right now, there's we see most people are coming in on Power BI is either using Dynamics or Salesforce. Which of those do you want to use? So I'll go ahead and click on my my um, Dynamics instances because that's actually the team I'm on. So we have access to a couple of those. And then it's going to go out and it's going to enumerate all of those that we've got. Um, the next stage, um, and I'll actually just go to the, the cooking definition is going to go out and show you um, is is going to go out and create a data pool set up the those data bring in the data sources from like your office tenant as well as your dynamics um, instance and start giving you that information let's take a look at what a, a finished version is so john was asking you know 
what does this look like for me? Where, where does that get created? So what the team's actually doing is um, under my workspaces, I probably shouldn't show these because it's actually a Microsoft tenant, but, and I'm going to have a ton of these that probably will give away interesting information. Um, I should actually have one called insights or sales, sales insights, eight, two, seven, eight, seven. So this is actually that definition of that data pool. And you can see that I've got that DLP, that DPLX that Matthew just shown. So this is the definition and an instance running in that app workspace. But almost certainly the reports you're looking at will actually be in a different app workspace. So John, I hopefully that makes sense to you. I, I, I promise you that I would demo that. Now, for most people, they're gonna see it as an installed app. Um, again, we actually talked about, they probably wouldn't wanna look at the data or play with the data. They just want the value. And for them, they're actually gonna get an app installed and these reports, in this case, it's a dashboard, already created for you. And I can go ahead and drill into this um, report from the dashboard and start getting this information. So again, going back to that no cliff paradigm, yes, you have access to all the data and it's gonna be wired up to all the Azure data services. And you have the model to go out and actually do interesting new insights. So even in this example, I could go, go out and connect to it and actually extend that data pool to do even more interesting things. But our team has gone out and spent, I know that the guys actually spent a month on just the linguistic semantics to go out and make these questions make a lot more sense. Actually, this has been added since last time I looked at it. There are more questions since now. This is what I say about working in dev. Um, but they actually spent a month on just making sure that you can actually go out, use Q&A and answer interesting questions and actually preload it with things that we know that people are looking at because we can actually see the telemetry. So um, getting back to the slides, hopefully you've seen, uh, one more time, there's a demo. Oh yeah, of course. If you guys wanna see more of Matthew or even more of me, uh, we're both gonna be doing sessions at the Business and Application Summit. I'm actually gonna do a pre-conference on administration the day before, and I'm working on actually the dashboard today. I'll come in and be doing part of the dashboard today and actually showing some of these inside apps. So there's lots and lots of sessions on these topics, drill downs into common data services for apps and analytics. And you can come and join us and the dev team uh, for that uh, um, conference. Um, but in conclusion, hopefully you'll see that while we may have done some poor choosing of the acronyms using CDSA for a couple <laughs> different places, um, they do fit together. One is a transactional data store. One is an analytical data store. And one, the business insight apps, is a way for you to immediately get value from your analytics store because we know about some of the common pathways and we'll create those for you. So Matthew, I'm gonna hand it back to you for you to say goodbye if you wanna actually have any other final words. Otherwise, I'm gonna go ahead and close this off. Yep, I, so I wanna say thank you very much, Chuck, for inviting me and giving me an opportunity to speak. Uh, uh, thank you everyone for questions and we'll, we'll spend more time in Q&A to, uh, to answer as many as we can. Uh, and in the context of that Business Application Summit in July, I uh, hope to see you guys there. Uh, we've got amazing things planned and uh, this is where uh, the, the next stage of the future of Power BI uh, and the BI platform will be revealed. So it'd be a pleasure to see you there in person. Thanks, you, Matthew. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate all of you guys like Hans joining. Bye.